Well, hello there, beautiful people. I thank you all for taking out the time to watch this video on today. This message that I am about to give came to me on Saturday, February 22nd, and I'm just now having the opportunity to sit down and record the message. So the, the topic or the title of it is called The Great Falling Away, Do Not Be Deceived. You know, we're, we always hear, oh, there's so much that's going on. There's so many things that's going on. And there is literally so much that is going on. And not everybody is paying attention. And this is a critical time for us to be watching, hearing, and even speaking because as God is moving, he is letting his people know what's going on so that we are prepared. So that's way we don't become casualties in the midst of all that's going on. Now, don't get me wrong. There are great things that are happening. There's positive things always happening because there's, there's, there has to be, there has to be a balance, but there's, not always something that's negative that's happening so it's not always doom and gloom but when God is speaking we must those of us who are his mouthpiece we must speak and those of us who need to hear we need to hear okay so the great falling away do not be deceived. So the chapter the scripture reading that came to me is from Matthew 24. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, start at verse four. And it says, uh, and Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Verse 11 says, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Now, what is iniquity? Iniquity is immoral or grossly unfavored or unfair behavior. It's wickedness, sinfulness, and gross injustice. Verse 13 says, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. 14 says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. And verse 22 says, and except those days should be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. 23 says, then if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Christ or there, believe it not. Verse 24 says, for thou shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So again, there is so much, there's so much darkness and there's so much evil and wickedness and the principalities that is going on, uh, in the earth. And we have to be paying attention. There are already so many of you who are deceived and not knowing the truth and it's either because you're being given the truth, people are coming to you, you can even see it, you can hear it, you can sense it, but you're rejecting it. And then there are just some who are literally not paying attention and they're just been, being, you know, led astray. They're being deceived. They're believing lies, okay? So... As I was as I was receiving this message and I'm looking down because I'm writing, I'm reading my notes. But as I was writing this, I was thinking like, oh, my gosh, you know, uh, there are so many of us who are upbeat and positive, like I'm an upbeat, positive person. But when God gives 
me what to say, I have to give it. So, you know, I am the messenger, okay? Um, and it is such a, a critical time and a season that we're in that those of us who are hearing from God, we cannot hold back any longer, Okay. And as I mentioned before, you know, I've been one who was holding back, holding things in, you know, because I was concerned about how someone would feel and, you know, not necessarily what they would think about me, but just how they would feel because I'm, I'm really careful with the words that I speak because I understand that our words have power for death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And I'm very, very cognizant of what I say and how I say things. And it's probably, you know, not been the best thing, uh, but that's just what I have been doing anyway. So let me come off that soapbox and get back to the message. So listen, so Jesus said, to take heed that no man, woman, mankind deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. And I'm going to read the scriptures one more time. Okay. So verse 11 says, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Verse 23 says, then if any man shall say unto you, here is Christ or there he is, do not believe it. Verse 24 says, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So listen. Three years ago, I was at an event and I met this gentleman, a businessman, and we got to talking about our businesses and what we do in the community and uh, things of that nature. And I gave him a business card and I did not hear anything from him anymore. That happens. We know that as business owners. Anyway, but last year, last April, before eight o'clock in the morning, this man called me, you know, I'm like, who is this? And he, you know, told me who he was. And I'm like, okay, you know, it jarred my memory. And I remembered who he was. So he's telling me that he's back in town and, um, he needs, he needs someone to help him to get his businesses reestablished so that he can continue to move forward. And of course, you know, for those of you who know me, I'm like, yes, this is great. You know, I work with entrepreneurs and businesses to help to literally catapult them to the next level. And that's what he wanted. He wanted to go to the next level in his business. So of course I was up for the challenge. So we're conversing, he's sharing with me, uh, the vision of his, uh, of what he wants to do, the events that he wants to put on and, uh, the dignitaries and, uh, those in honored positions that he wants to have to come to this event. Then while we're talking, the conversation shifts to him talking about Jesus. And I'm like, okay, cool. You know? I can have this conversation. Jesus, I know him, <laughs> you know. Anyway, so we're having these conversations and what I realized is that I was being baited, you know, but okay, I'll tell you, I'll go to that part later. Anyway, so we're having these conversations and he's like, Jesus is coming back soon. And I'm like, yep, he sure is, <laughs> you know, and I'm excited to have these conversations because, you know, when the word of God is in you, you know, when the word goes forth, you, your body is like, Hey, this is life speaking to me. So let's talk about him. You know, let's talk about it. All the great things that he's done. So another week goes by and you know, he bringing up Jesus again. And again, I enjoy talking, but in my uh, maturity. <laughs> and as I am growing, uh, and gaining wisdom, I truly understand the importance of listening and hearing what people are saying. Okay. So <clears throat> he's talking about Jesus again. And then what he says to me is I am Jesus. I'm 
like, mm, no, you're not, <laughs> you know, and he's like, yeah, I'm Jesus. And, you know, people are going to know they're going to see me and, you know, talking about the wrath of God and how people who have done him wrong and all this stuff. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. How did I get here in this moment? So what came to my mind was I can't preach or teach about God's word if I don't know it. I can tell you what the Bible says. I can tell you what it says. Who my goodness. But we have to have our own experiences. And I am so thankful because God gives us the grace and the mercy that we need in order to go through so that we can learn the lesson, so that it becomes a part of our testimony, so that we can share it with others because we are overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. So I am... You know, I'm like, okay, so Lord, what do I do with this? Well, just about a week or so prior to this conversation, I was visiting with my mother and my, my mother is a very uh, faithful woman of God and she knows the word of God. She is the word of God bearer. It's on the inside. And <clears throat> she gave me this book and this book is called World Religions made easy. And so, of course, you know, I took some time out and I read the whole book. You know, of course, it's, you know, easy read. And it's about the different religions uh, in the world. And so, fast forwarding back to the conversation that he and I were having, he was telling me about the religious beliefs that he have. And I will not share it because I don't want, you know, to just go into that detail anyway. But he's sharing uh, to me about the the, the teachings that he has been taught all these years, okay? And he's an older gentleman. And so what I want to share with you is that it's so easy to be deceived if you do not, first and foremost, know God for yourself and know this word. Oh my goodness. If you do not know the word of God, if you do not take out the time to study the word of God, you can be easily led astray. There are so many false doctrines in the world. There are so many false teachings in the world. And if you do not have the foundation of Jesus Christ, you will be led astray. And be deceived because you don't know the truth. And so it's imperative that in this moment, in this season, that you read the word of God. That you, even if you don't take out the time to start right this moment to even to read. Take out the time this very moment to stop and just pray. Just, Lord, if you don't believe, Lord, I don't believe that you're real. Ha, but I don't shut up. But if you are, I ask that you will do something in my life to prove to me that you are who these so-called Christians say that you are. These so-called believers say that you are so that I can know for myself. And when I tell you that if you are sincere in your heart, that he will do it for you. Trust and believe he's going to do it because he already has purpose for you. He created you. He is your creator and he's going to give you the desires of your heart if you will only take out the time to stop and ask him seriously. Not jokingly, oh, ha, 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 you know, whatever. He might do it then too, but I'm just saying, like, do it. Just do it. Anyway, so he's going on and on. This man is going on and on and he's telling me how he is Jesus and you know, how he has come in the flesh. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, no, you are not, you know, but if it had not been for me having my own personal relationship with Christ, with Jesus, with God himself, 
I could have been led astray. I could have been like, oh, well, they said that Jesus was coming. You know, he was coming like a thief in the night, you know, and okay, well, that's what the word says. Oh, wow. He has manifested himself in, in, in man form. If I, whoo, if I did not know the word of God and God for myself, I would have been following this man. That's how people get led astray and they get caught up in these cults because there's some person that comes to them that tells them it sounds good because they don't know and they get led astray. They start doing unseen, un unspeakable things and unseen things and they are, they are deceived you all. So, uh, who, my goodness, <clears throat> Let me get back to my message. So, you know, I'm just, I'm, you know, so what I did was, I'm sorry, let me get my thoughts together. So I had a headache because this was false, what this man was saying to me. And I knew it. And I'm very sensitive in the spirit. So when, when there's opposition, when there are lies, when there's deception, when there's demonic presence, I can feel it. OK, so I began to get a headache and I'm listening and I, I, be, I began to become like frustrated. OK, so what I did was I read to this man what Matthew 24 says and he listened. He did not interrupt me because sometimes they're on the inside. The actual person is there to hear what is actually being said. But when there's a demonic presence either around you, there's barriers that is blocking you, preventing from the truth to go forward, you may not hear it. It's like bouncing off. And I felt, I, I knew that he was listening, but then what he, oh, and, and so let me tell you again. So it says, then if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Christ, you know, do not believe it. And I was telling him, whoever told you that you were Jesus, they lied to you. They lied to you. Whatever it is that you are following, whatever doctrine, you know, that you're following, they lied to you. You are not Jesus. Jesus, who, my goodness, he came, he died. First of all, he came, he was crucified, he died, and he rose again. But he is with our Father, our Heavenly Father, and he's in us, okay? But coming in the, the, the form of man as him, that was not so. Anyway, so I just want to share with you all, again, there are so many of you out here who are deceived already, and... The time is now to where you must get your life in order. Yes, in the biblical times, it spoke about the end of the age, the end of times. And, oh my gosh. And how it was coming real soon. We know not the time. We know not the hour. We know not the minute, the second. We do not know when Jesus is going to come back. Do not continue to think and believe that you have time to get, oh my gosh, your life together. Because you don't know in what hour, in what moment that your life, oh my gosh, ooh, would be taken away from you. And I'm concerned about your soul. I'm concerned about the spirit. That's on the inside of your body. Because when we leave this earth, when your soul separates from this flesh, it's going to another place. But what place, oh my gosh, are you going to? Are you going to spend the rest of eternity in hell? Or are you going to spend the rest of eternity, oh my gosh, with our creator, our heavenly father in heaven, in his kingdom? Where are you going to spend the rest of your life? Pay attention. 
for those of you who have seen the advertisements for my seminar that's coming up on March 7th, it is called Awake, Aware, and Accountable. Mm. And who, oh my gosh. This is the time <clears throat> when we need to wake up. And I know everybody who may be watching this video does not know me personally. But I pray that you hear my heart because I have a strong desire for God's people to be saved. We only have the life that God's that God gives us. He can give you another chance because I know that he gave me another chance and I'll share that in another posting. But come out on March 7th to the uh, Detroit Public Library, the Redford Branch on Grand River across from Meyer. Uh, the tickets are $15. And I'm not trying to promote. I'm just saying, like, there's more that God, who oh my gosh, wants us to know and to be aware of. But if we're not paying attention, it's going to be a great falling away. And there is no second chance once you fall away, there is no other opportunity for you to get it right once you have fallen away. So read Matthew 24. <clears throat> and I will say read it in its entirety, but the scripture reading was from uh, verse 4 through verse 24. So I love you all, and I, let me just, I, I, I love you, <laughs> and I'm going to end this message here, and I look forward to, to seeing you and hearing from you again soon. I love you all. Be blessed, and just pay attention. Amen.